Back when I were a lad, around four months ago, Mr Thrive and Survive put out a challenge video challenging people to show that they could produce a penumbra larger than the blocking object. I did that. Now some of you think I might have forgotten about this, but I haven't. So Rich's challenge was to use the sun and any blocking object and demonstrate that it could produce a penumbra that was larger than the blocking object. And this was the experiment that I did cut down a lot. So I took a cardboard disc, drew a circle around the edge of it, showed that the disc was the same size, walked it away for a distance so we could capture a shadow and then walked it back again. I then took that video into my video editing software and removed the white of the paper and only the pure white and that left the shadow and you can see that that shadow and penumbra is larger than the original circle. Job done. Now the good thing is Rich pretty much straight away acknowledged that I had done as he had asked, used the sun and produced a penumbra that was larger than a blocking object. He said he would reply in a few days. It was quite a while and I did an additional little experiment just to demonstrate a penumbra. The reason we get penumbras is because the sun is larger than the earth and any object on it. So light is coming from several directions and the shadows overlap. Where it overlaps every single time, that's your full shadow. Where it's sometimes overlapped and sometimes in light, that's your penumbra. So I took an object and cast a shadow from several positions. I then screen captured various images from those positions, stacked them and then had a look at the result. It's quite plain to see from the three images making up the stack that the central portion is always in shadow. That is your umbra. The additional areas where it's lighter grey, that is penumbra because sometimes from some positions it's in shadow other times it's in light that's what a penumbra is and so I waited for a response from Rich and waited during that time my account of subscribers increased and so did the number of wonderful patrons with massive thanks and appreciation to all my patrons including new patrons Sharpworks, X Penguin 95, Stephen York, Ue Closer, Wee Scott's Dog, Marconius, Jason Utting, Kevin Seidel and Doc Brew, and my latest patron, Marius. Thank you all so very much. Eventually, Rich did put out a live stream. It was a little over two hours long, and it did mention umbras and penumbras and the challenge, but it didn't really seem to address the fact that I had actually done as he had asked although right at the end of the video he did say I'll put something together to try to explain what I'm saying with the shadow thing with the umbra pen umbra because it's proof the other side proved it to me that we have a close sun because you would not have an umbra pen umbra with parallel rays you just wouldn't have it it's non-parallel rays that cause the umbra pen umbra well, thank you, Rich, for acknowledging that I did actually meet your challenge and I showed a penumbra larger than the blocking object. I'll chalk that one up as a win. It does seem now as though you're moving on to something different, a close and local sun. So, once again, I waited and waited. It's been a long time, but Rich has now produced his video. Roll VT. Hi everyone, Rich Mr. Thrive and Survive. This is the very long awaited reply to the couple channels who proved the penumbra. And um, I've decided after uh, long contemplation to make this extremely short and as um, less detailed as necessary, but still get to the point. Uh, what happened was with uh, the individuals, and I thank you once again for doing the, doing the work. Uh, who proved an umbra penumbra, what they actually proved is we have a close local sun. No, I didn't. 
and I'm going to show that right here. Uh, the big lie is this diagram right here, uh, which is uh, hardly to scale. And uh, let's just say this is a hypothesis. Let's see if the other side can um, debunk it. Well, you're correct that that's not to scale. It's grossly not to scale because there's no way we could draw it sensibly to scale. But what it is showing holds true. Uh, they're showing you right here what exactly causes the umbra penumbra. It's the crisscrossing of the sun's rays. And notice how they perfectly at some point crisscross and hit the edges of the earth and produce both the umbra and the penumbra. And um, you'll find uh, hardly any literature on this whatsoever, but it is the crisscrossing of the larger uh, light source uh, on a smaller blocking object, which causes the umbra penumbra. I think she's got it. I think she's got it. By George, she's got it. By George, she's got it. Thank you, Professor. I think he has got it. All you need is a light source that is larger than the blocking object. Then you'll get both an umbra and penumbra. It does not have to be close. Uh, they demonstrated in their videos that the umbra penumbra is produced uh, when the blocking object, uh, let's just say the sun is much closer to the earth uh, or any light source. Uh, the umbra penumbra would be uh, seen very early uh, when you take the, uh, let's say the earth diameter, you only go, go away one or two diameters, you would already start to see uh, the umbra penumbra uh, be shown. And as you take that light source and go farther and farther away, you have to take the blocking object and move it farther and farther away from where the shadow is cast before you see the umbra penumbra. Well, almost. The further away the light source is, then the shallower the angles. Therefore, the difference between the umbra and penumbra is less pronounced. That's all it is. The difference is the farther away you get with the light um, source, the crisscrossing of the way of the uh, light would occur at a much um, less steep angle. And so that then you have to have the uh, umbra penumbra, um, well, you would have a umbra penumbra produced uh, only after you had the diameters moved farther and farther away from the blocking source. I'm not sure you do get it, Rich. Look at that diagram there. If the earth is my cardboard disc and the right-hand side of the image was my piece of paper. You can see that the umbra is a cone that gets smaller towards the right. The penumbra is a cone that gets larger. The reason I moved the, the cardboard disc away from the paper was to accentuate the difference. I could just as easily have held the cardboard still and moved the paper away. I did not have to move the cardboard closer to the sun to produce a visible penumbra. Let's show this to scale uh, as best as I can show it and we'll see where the problem lies. With all due respect, Rich, I think the problem lies in you not being able to visualize light traveling through 3D space. Now this is graph paper, so this will be as close to the scale as I can get. Uh, the Earth is actually going to be smaller than this green dot right over here. Let me uh, zoom in on this a little bit for you guys. Each one of these squares represents one million miles. Now if we zoom out, where is the sun? Still not seeing it. There it is, right here. And that is why you can't sensibly show diagrammatically the paths of light between the sun and the earth to scale. Uh, so now, how would the light rays, okay, crisscross to the earth from that distance? Let's take a look at it two different ways. Now this is exaggerated, I admit that, but I want to show what the point is. If we have these rays crisscross here, as you can see, these light rays would never strike the Earth, ever. They just wouldn't do it. And you can come halfway down here and crisscross them, and they still won't strike the Earth. Well that is true, Rich, but what you don't seem to be getting is that from every single point over the entire surface of the sun light is emitted in every direction so those individual rays that you've drawn would not strike the earth but other rays coming from the same points on the sun would strike the earth 
Otherwise, we wouldn't see the sun. So here's an example of where I took the rays and I crisscrossed them so that they would... Now, I know it's a little off here, but... Um, as far as where the earth is, but the, it would, you have to go at about, uh, I don't know, five to 10 million miles, and then they would crisscross, and then if you had the earth directly centered in here, uh, that would probably work for the umbra penumbra. But here's the problem. The problem is at this close distance, it's essentially the same as the rays that strike the earth. Now, if you look it up, it's going to say the, the rays of the sun strike the earth at a 90 degree angle, no crisscross. The sun is not a point source of light. Light rays travelling from the top or the bottom, the left or the right of the sun are coming to you from slightly different angles. The sun has an angular resolution of around half a degree, which means light waves coming from different points around the visible edge of the sun are coming from up to half a degree away from each other. And they, as you can see, when you look at it the scale, they have to strike at a 90 degree angle. Otherwise, you're not going to see the entire sun. And we see the entire disk. So either the distance is wrong, the size is wrong, or both. There is another possibility, Rich. You are wrong. Hopefully this diagram will make it clearer, Rich. You've got a light ray, dotted line, coming from the very top of the sun, meeting your eye. You've got another one from the very bottom of the sun meeting your eye. Now obviously the sun is larger than your eye so those two beams of light will have had to converge. But coming from those two points top and bottom of the sun there's not only the beam of light going directly to your eye there's beams of light going in every direction. So if there's a beam of light pointing absolutely vertical from that top of the sun it cannot be parallel with the beam of light that meets your eye. When we're talking about the beams of light being parallel, they're actually very nearly parallel to your eye. The top and the bottom of your sun will appear around half a degree apart. As near as, damn it, parallel. And we know there's light travelling in every direction from every point on, from that sun, because if you've got another guy stood on that earth a thousand miles away, he looks towards that sun, he would also see the top and bottom of the sun. So therefore, beams of light also are travelling directly to him. And let's take a look at the actual crisscross of these uh, with the exact data that NASA gives us. So we come down here and see where they're going to crisscross as they strike the Earth. And as you can see, they never, they never crisscross before they get to the Earth. Well after the Earth, way well after the Earth, are they going to crisscross. No, those particular beams you drew are not going to cross in front of the Earth. Others will. Do a, uh, a triangle, you'll see they, they do not crisscross. So how do we get an upper penumbra without the crisscross? And also this goes back to the video that everybody made fun of me where I said you would never see the outside of the disk of the sun at 93 million miles because those rays would never strike the Earth. Can you see that right here? How are you going to see the outer edge disk of the, of the sun when they never strike the Earth. Let's try this again with a diagram, Rich, not to scale. We'll convert your diagram with the beams that just miss the Earth above and below. So we've got a large Sun and small Earth 93 million miles apart. Let's add on those two beams that you added to your diagram. So you had those two beams almost parallel, 89 point whatever degrees apart, and they both missed the Earth. So no matter where you are stood on that Earth, you would not see those beams. You are quite correct that you wouldn't see the top of the sun or the bottom of the sun with those beams of light. However, what you have totally missed is the fact that from that top and bottom of the sun, beams of light travel out in every direction. And this will include beams of light that travel and hit the Earth. Those from the top and the bottom of the sun will be 0.5 degrees apart, the sun's angular size. Almost, but not quite, almost parallel. We're the ones only ridiculed early on for not doing it to scale. Well, when you do it to scale, their model falls apart. So that's my reply to this. Uh, 
And uh, I look forward to hearing what people have to say about it. Again, it's, a, it's my hypothesis that it is impossible for a 93 million mile sun to produce an umbra penumbra. It's just impossible. And if you can't show the crisscross that, that shows it, that does it, and show how we see the entire disk of the sun, then your distance to the sun belief is wrong. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Okay, to try and wrap this up, Rich. The larger the sun is, the greater pronounced the penumbra is against the umbra. Or, if the sun is closer, then the, the more pronounced the penumbra is. But the fact that there is a penumbra does not rely on any particular distance for the sun. It just relies on the sun being larger than the blocking object. You seem to genuinely be misunderstanding those diagrams with paths of light. If my face, my beautiful face, is the sun, then someone over there would see me. Someone there and someone there would see my entire face. Because from any individual point, light is travelling off to every direction. So it can be seen from every direction. This is not difficult stuff, Rich. It really isn't. And, to be honest, it's got nothing to do with the Earth being flat either. I hope, I genuinely hope, that you understand this. I really do. Anyway, until next time, stay sensible. Shut up and sit down.